Thank you very, very much, Jos Grotens. I've got another great, great pleasure to introduce our next guest, CEB Rias. CEB Rias lives and works in Los Angeles. His software, prints, and installations have been featured in many, many exhibitions, solo and group shows, museums, galleries, all over the world. Rias's ongoing process series explores the relationship between naturally evolved systems and those which are synthetic. Rias is a professor at the University of California, and it's maybe interesting to add that because you've all seen the map during the John Brockman session of John Meda, that he's a student of John Meda, but that he is also the teacher of Aaron Coblin, whose work you've all seen yesterday and his presentation. Rias holds master's degree from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in Media Arts and Sciences, and together with Ben Fry, he initiated Processing in 2001, which is an open source programming language and environment for creating images, animation, and interaction. It's also together with Fry that Rias published their landmark book, Cult Book Processing, a programming handbook for visual designers and artists in 2007, and getting started with Processing in 2010, which are the two new books. His work is archived on a website, which is httprias.com, and he will present here the Lecture Process Compendium 2004 to 2010. A very warm welcome to CEB Rias. Hello, good afternoon. So I'm going to ask a lot of you over the next 15 minutes um, to not only listen but to also watch intently and also to read as well. Um, I won't read what is, appears on screen in text. So this presentation summarizes seven years of following a single line. The phenomena of emergence is the core of the exploration. The system is very idiosyncratic and pseudoscientific, and it contains references ranging from the history of mathematics to the generation of artificial life. So with that, we start at the beginning. This is form one. This is behavior one. Behavior two. Behavior three. Behavior four. This is element one. An element is a simple machine that is comprised of a form and one or more behaviors. That definition can be written more concisely. So this diagram shows element one in action. The behavior is easier to see when we add notation. These arrows show behavior one. These arrows show behavior two. And these arrows show behavior three. Observe what happens when we restart the system and modify parameters. Again, we restart the system and modify parameters. For review, this is the full definition for element one. And now we jump to element three. Note the omission of behavior two and the addition of behavior five. This diagram shows element three in action. Observe what happens when we restart the system and modify parameters. And once again, we restart the system and modify parameters. The last element we'll scrutinize today is element five. 
Note the addition of behaviors six and seven. This diagram shows element five in action. Unlike element three, notice that the elements form groups as the diagram runs. They flock together as they search for a common heading. In the library, there are currently two forms, seven behaviors, and five elements. So let's push forward again. We're now looking at a software interpretation of process four. A process defines an environment for elements and determines how the relationships between the elements are seen. Process four fills the surface with element one, and draws a line between the elements while they overlap. When it starts, the elements have a random distribution, but structure emerges as they execute their behaviors. This is process four. The text defines the process through a description in English. It's written with the intent to, be interp to interpret its content into software or some other form of dynamic media. Like a score in music, the text defines the work, but it needs to be enacted to be experienced. This is an alternate interpretation of process four. Different decisions were made about how to define the text as code. From process four, I derived a series of additional work. This is a documentation image from process four installation one. It's a two-channel software projection. This is process four installation four, AKA network A. It's also a projected work. It combines the behavior of element one with recorded drawings to choreograph the elements. After each element has been instantiated, it follows its behavior. This is a documentation image of Process 4 Performance 1, a live visual performance for Music for 18 Musicians, composed by Steve Reich. Each phase of the music was interpreted visually in a different manner. I was performing the piece by drawing on the tablet live from the stage. Here we have CLAD, a series of glass fiber reinforced concrete objects. The lines were determined by Process 4. These are one-to-one -one architectural prototypes for the Lunar House, a collaboration with the architecture studio David Clovers. So again, moving on, this is a software interpretation of process 10. Like process four, element one is the basis of process 10, but this process exerts more control. The elements can only emerge from the center of the surface.
And this is process 10. Like process four, a number of works were derived from process 10. This is one print from a series of 12 images. And another print from the same series. This detail shows the resolution and texture of the image. Process 10 installation one is a software installation derived from process 10. Each of the disks contains its own generative system. This image is a more comprehensive view of the installation. <coughs> Moving on, this is a software interpretation of process 18. It, all, it utilizes element five. When two lines overlap, a shape is drawn from the endpoints of each line to form a quadrilateral. The structure emerges as the elements form groups. This is process 18. The process works are typically exhibited as a projected diptych flanked by the instructions. Here we see the element and the definition on the right and the process text and the software interpretation on the left. The right side of the diptych shows the instantaneous interactions between the elements and the left shows the aggregate surface that records the history of the interactions as an image. they are two parallel views of the same system. You can see the active areas on the right uh, correspond to the areas where the image is being drawn more on the left. So each process is exhibited as software, but also with its related artifacts. This is a diptych of C prints from process 18. Free from the constraints of real-time generative software, the prints evolve within the context of the new medium, in this case print. This is a detail of one print and a detail of another in the series. Process 18 was also used to derive a pair of reliefs milled from a dense fiber composite material. This is the detail. A more recent interpretation of process 18 shows how the software can be interpreted in a manner that breaks from the constraints of the text. In this case, color was introduced to evoke a different quality. This software variation was used to derive a new series of process 18 prints. Again, the software evolved within the context of the print medium. This is a diptych from a similar series of five. Most recently, I completed the process compendium 2004 through 2010, a set of 15 C prints that are the definitive archive of the process work of the last seven years. The final moment of this uh, presentation is a review of the 15 images that comprise Compendium A from 18 to Process 4. This is Process 18, 
17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. And now we're back to process 4, uh, which is also the end. Thank you very much. <laughs>